just like the police. They can have all the evidence in the world, but they want the confession. He is brash. My house cost millions of dollars. Don't hate the player, hate the game. He is brilliant. That's right, you don't like gays, you're gonna have a gay son. You don't like Puerto Ricans, your daughter's gonna come home and live in a vida loca. And often, a bonfire of profanity. I mean, they don't grade fathers, but if your daughter's a stripper, you f***ed up. When I'm talking to young comics, I tell them don't curse. I swear, I tell them all the time, because the money's in not cursing. I mean, I'm doing fine, I got a big house, but Ray Romano would laugh at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Romano <laughs> was like, are you kidding? You want me to live in that? Because the real money isn't clean. The real money's in clean, babe. All right, I'm real. <laughs> Fear not. Chris Rock, the master of stand-up comedy, is not cleaning up his act, per se. But for the next couple of months, he will be appearing on Broadway in a play using language his fans will find familiar. I'm also learning how to speak French. I'm taking a archery class. There's the names of the actors. And there's the title of the play. It's the mother... Yeah, well, it's got two stars. Two whatever, stars. Whatever that letter, those two letters are. Yeah. Doing a play is a deliberate and risky move out of Rock's comfort zone. Now I realize how big Broadway is. In the last four months, I'm like, wow, they just don't let anybody do this. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the hat? What hat? That hat right there. The play is a pitch black dark comedy. That's not your hat? About five New Yorkers connected by lust and addiction. I'm just a grown man trying to make my way in the world the best I can. It's like Raging Bull without the boxing. <laughs> That's what it kind of is. It's kind of a real adult version of a Honeymooners episode. Is there anything you've done that prepared you for this in any way, shape, or form? The closest I would come to this would be Saturday Night Live. You know what's weird, too? I was kind of looking for the cue card guy the first week of rehearsal. I'm like... Surely they'll have cards at some point. <laughs> Surely Al Pacino's not just out there. <laughs> For two it hours. There must be a monitor or something, a teleprompter somewhere, right? I mean, we'll learn it. Yeah, but there's some, there's some backup, right? Uh, by the way, I'm Ralph D., Jackie's sponsor. Pleasure. Rock, who plays Ralph D., an amoral AA sponsor, says he welcomed the opportunity to be part of an ensemble. You in prison looking at a photo, I was in Motel 6 looking at the real thing, and the truth is, we were both happy. I was happy, you were happy, fat. It, it's a weird way, this is like the acting school I never got to go to. Hmm. And I'm, I'm very interested in seeing how this affects the rest of my work. Because <laughs> in a weird way, it feels like I, I knew nothing. I almost want to buy back all my movies. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, America. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Rock's first movie, a bit part as the Playboy Mansion parking lot attendant in the 1987 Eddie Murphy blockbuster, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Up, man, check this out. I get $10 for cars, I get $20 for limos. What the hell is this? Rock idolized Murphy. He says Murphy was one of the first comics to play to people his own age. I had some ice cream, and I'm gonna eat it all. I'm gonna eat it And in a crazy show business kind of way, it was Murphy who gave Rock his start. There's a story that uh, says that you were in line to buy tickets for an Eddie Murphy show, like at Radio City or something. True, true story. The line was so long. This is before, it's how old I am. You know, before the internet, before, you know, <laughs> back when they had lines, right? And I'm online and I'm reading the Times and I see an ad, you know, this thing for the comedy clubs. I said, and I just walked from, like, something just had a little epiphany and walked from Radio City to Catch a Rising Star and signed my name for audition night was that night. Been doing stand-up ever since. We don't even have salad dressing! We don't have salad dressing! 
know, everybody got salad dressing, no black salad dressing. You know what black salad dressing is? Hot salt. If all humor is based in grievance, then rock has never had a shortage of material. Irreverent, incorrect, and spot on. There ain't a white man in this room that would change places with me. None of you. None of you would change places with me, and I'm rich. And rooted in experiences he had as a child, being bussed out of his Brooklyn neighborhood to a predominantly white school. Had to get up every morning at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to school and compete with white kids that didn't have to wake up until 8. <laughs> well, that's not fair. You know, say I get a lower mark on the test, they got a teacher going, oh, Chris can't read. I'm like, no, Chris is f***ing pie, huh? <laughs> His four comedy albums and five HBO specials once earned him the title of Entertainment Weekly's Funniest Man in America. But being funny has its limitations. I would say this, when you're a comedian, people, it, it just, uh, people have an automatic opinion about you, especially, especially if you use profanity in your work. That you, like, you don't curse at your kids, like, pass the MF cereal, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like people think that's what you are sometimes. So Rock sought to counter that by writing, producing, and directing his own films. And before I go, I got one more thing to say. Like the 2003 comedy, Head of State. A big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. Head of State shows you that there was once a point in the very, you know. Recent past. In the very recent past that they thought of a black man being president was funny <laughs> to the point a company gave me millions of dollars to make a movie about it, like here. To make fun of that idea. Like, <laughs> black president, ha, 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 ha. How many of you work in a city you can't afford to live in? That ain't right. No, no, no. And just five years later. If Senator McCain is elected, we'll have another president who wants to privatize part of your social security. That ain't right. Rock was also the creator, executive producer, and narrator for the award-winning television show, Everybody Hates Chris. Since me and Greg couldn't play sports, we talked about him all the time. An autobiographical look at his teenage years, which is now in syndication and runs everywhere from Malaysia to Macedonia. In 2005, Rock hosted the Oscars to less than rave reviews. Since then, he's kept a somewhat lower profile. Rock, now 46, describes this time in his life as rebooting. You gotta be really good to last. You really do. It's just, you're not gonna get by just on being popular. So I'm really just trying to learn and get better. Being rich, it's not about having a lot of money. Being rich is about having lots of options. For now, option one is eight shows a week on Broadway. And then... I'm trying to, you know, be in a position where I could do a lot of different things. Yeah. And they all kind of funnel through comedy. I'm not getting super pretentious. I'm not about to, you know... You're not going to do Shakespeare in the Park? No, I'm not. I think I'm thinking about doing Tyler Perry in the Park. How's that? <laughs> Just trying to figure out which one 